productive, creative, and positive greetings to you all. This is Sherelle J with another creative tutorial. Today, I will be working on a highly requested fluid art project done entirely in After Effects with no third-party plugins. So this is gonna be a lot of fun, guys. Stay tuned. We are going to start by creating a new composition. I named this composition base one because this is our fluid bubbles base. I set this to 1280 by 720 pixels and it's about 24 frames per second. Next, I'm going to create a new solid. Uh, I used a bluish color. Next, we are going to add the mercury effect to our layer. We're going to uh, select it under effects and presets and we're gonna place it over our blue solid. So that's the CC Mr. Mercury effect. Next, we are going to adjust the settings on this effect. I set the X radius to about 95, the Y radius to 90, and the velocity um, and the birth rate as well. The birth rate is 0.5, the longevity about 1.8, the gravity I kept it low at 0.01. I left uh, the animation at explosion and the birth rate at zero and the death rate should be 0.74. So next, uh, we're going to push the layer forward, the solid layer forward in time a few seconds so that we can get to the point where the birth of the blobs actually starts to take place. I then extended the duration of that solid layer and just pulled that out. Using Command D on our uh, on our Mac, or if you might have a PC, so you might use Control D. I duplicated our solid layer. Next, I went to the solid settings and adjusted the color. I chose a pink color. I set the birth size on this one to 0.03 and the death size to about 0.47. Next, we're going to hit Command D again and duplicate the pink layer. Oh, I forgot to rename the pink layer, so I'm going to do that now. This new layer is going to be renamed the purple base. And once again, we're going to adjust the solid settings and we're going to choose a purplish color, a vibrant purple color. Now on this, we're going to adjust the X radius and the Y radius so that the purple is further away from the previous layer. Now with these settings, we're gonna adjust it to the X radius being 90, the Y radius to about 127, the velocity and birth rate is gonna stay the same, and we're going to adjust the birth rate to 0.14 and the death rate to 0.30. Now we're going to make a new adjustment layer and under effects and presets, we're going to go to the effect find edges. And this is going to add a slight stroke to our generated blobs or bubbles. Now we don't want the effect to replace the color of our blob, so we are going to adjust the blend to about 75%. So now we're going to pre-compose all of our layers. And we're gonna do that by selecting them all and hitting Command Shift C. I'm going to name this new comp Fluid Base. I'm gonna temporarily turn off this layer and create a new layer. This new solid layer is going to serve as our background layer. 
Now I'm going to import a file image I have here. Uh, this image doesn't have to be of anything in particular because we're going to actually distort this image. We're just using it for a bit of texture. But I chose this free image I found off of Pexels.com. Pexels is a great resource for creatives. It has some amazing stock images. So we imported our image and after scaling the size to fit our document, we're going to add a displacement effect to it. Under effects and presets, we are going to select turbulent displace. So we're also going to add some adjustments to um, our settings here. We're going to adjust the evolution settings and what we're going to do is hit our stopwatch and add a keyframe at the beginning of our project and then we're going to go to the end of the project and we're going to add another keyframe and make sure we add here one uh, full rotation to the evolution. So as you can see once we do that now we'll have a bit of movement in our fluid project. Now let's move our fluid base above our sunset image now, the one we created earlier. We're going to set it to add. And we're going to actually duplicate this layer and adjust the layer mode to our new layer. On this new layer, we're going to change the mode to normal. And we're also going to add a turbulent displacement to this new layer. For the settings on the turbulent displacement on our new layer, we're going to set it to 112, the size about 161. Now let's duplicate that layer one more time and we're going to adjust the size and the complexity once again. We're going to offset the anchor point of the position so that the effect is shifted slightly. We're going to adjust the amount to 263, the size is 161 and the complexity is about a 3.0. Now we're going to add a new adjustment layer and this layer is actually to add a blending to the effect. We're going to go to effects and presets and under color correction you'll find the effect colorama. This effect is similar to the gradient map effect you'll find in Photoshop for those who are familiar with Photoshop. In the input phase we are going to choose add a phase from green and we're also going to add phase from our blues. I'm going to start with the preset option of Solarize Gray. You can actually play around in the preset settings and see if there's something that you like. They have some amazing options here in these settings. But um, just to start with, I want to uh, start with Solarize Gray because I like the contrast that it adds to our project. So once I chose Solar Solarize Gray, you'll notice immediately you get this vibrant contrast in our image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click to the left of the black triangle and add a little bright turquoise. Next to the turquoise, I'm then going to add purple. And now I'm going to add a vibrant blue. Next, a pink. An orange. A yellow. A green. A brighter green. And that brighter green is going to serve as a transition. And next a turquoise. Finally, a blue.
And then to finish off the outer regions of the, the layer, we're gonna add a black. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the top black layer. It's kind of located at 12 o'clock on our out output dial. And we're going to adjust the opacity. We're gonna decrease the opacity. And what that's going to do is let the white solid background that we created earlier come through and decrease that black. I decided at this moment I was going to adjust our previous fluid place layer, the second one that we created, and set it to screen because I wanted to add a little pop of color and a little bit of depth. Now we're going to add another adjustment layer. This time we're going to add a effect called liquify. So you're going to go under effects and presets and find the liquify tool and once you do that we're going to adjust our brush. So we're going to use our warp tool here, the one that looks like a finger, and we're going to adjust the brush size to about 267 and the pressure to about 75. Now what I'm going to do is smudge our image and twist our image to get a more fluid-like look. So you can see I'm smudging here. This is all subjective. Um, I'm going to twist it and I'm going to use that twisty icon to twist it and smudge it. And I'm going to continue to do this until I find a look that I like, till it starts to look nice and fluid. I'm going to try not to overdo it though. And the great thing about this option is, of course, you can use Command Z to undo it. Or you can go down under uh, under the liquify option, you'll see it says distortion percentage. You can decrease that percentage if you want to make it less intense. Next, we're going to add one more adjustment layer and we're going to add the CC glass option. You'll notice instantly that there's a glass sheen to your image. I'm going to adjust the settings to a height about 12, a diffuse at about 72, the specular at about 67. We're going to adjust the roughness and the metal to about 27. I lowered the light height and I played around with these settings to add some more dimension. So you can play with these settings. You might want to make it look more shiny and glossy. You might want to make it look less shiny. It's all up to you. It's all a matter of your perspective. But just play with these settings until you find something that looks fluidic to you. So let's take a final look at our project. We rendered it out and this is what it looks like. So now, if you don't like the stagnant look, we've added enough keyframes and evolutions to keep it moving here. And this is another example of a fluid art project that I did. I played with the settings and the colors, and this one doesn't have that class effect. Um, at that we added at the end. I also added some gradient overlay to intensify the colors and a glow as well. So play around with the settings and options. You guys might find something else you like and please, please tag me in your posts on Instagram or Facebook so I can see what variations that you guys have. So this is the end of our tutorial. Thank you guys so much for liking. I plan on making more content in 2019. Uh, quite a few smaller tutorials as well. So don't forget to subscribe. And also my next video is going to be by special request. Someone actually sent me an email and asked me if I could attempt to create something. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do. So if you guys want to message me or leave me a comment and ask me to try a different effect or a simulation, 
go ahead and, and leave that information on there and I'll give it a shot. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is Sherelle J and stay tuned.